Welcome to Sunday's social skills class, courtesy of your favorites. The purpose of this class is to teach you that you can't win an argument no matter what the fuck you do. You wanna know why? Because even when you've lost the argument, you still lose. But even when you win it, even when you convince the other guy that he's redundant, that his points are pointless, points are pointless, you still lose because the whole purpose of an argument is to get someone from your, this side over to this side, which is where you're at. But at the end of the argument, once you've shot this other guy's points full of holes, once you made him feel redundant, he's going to resent you because, well, you just made him feel inferior. You've made him feel like shit. And naturally, a man convinced against his will is of the same opinion still. So you pretty much just did nothing that entire time. You went through all these researching, whatever. You went through the research, you went through the documentations. You wrote down paragraphs of the paragraphs. And this guy doesn't even want to go into your side because he's just been hurt. Wait, wait, hang on, hang on. What happened though? This is like such an important mindset, okay? The whole purpose of this class is to just teach you that arguments, for one, must be avoided. The only way to win an argument is to completely avoid it altogether. And to number two, to teach you that arguments in where both parties are completely emotional always end up in failure, always end up in both sides having the exact same belief as before. What the hell? How the fuck do you enter into an argument and you leave with the exact same beliefs you had beforehand? I thought you were supposed to like, you know, converse. Oh, that's the difference between persuasion and arguing. <clears throat> Fuck, bro. So what we want to do is not argue. We want to persuade. I'm going to teach you mainly about arguing and how absolutely redundant it is. And maybe how we can use a little bit of persuasion, okay? So first, when it comes to arguing, when it comes to someone disagreeing with you, what I want you to do is to hold off on your judgment because the first thing you're going to have is a negative thought thinking to yourself, yeah, this guy's a fucking dumbass. I've had it before too. If someone came up to me and said, the best way to get rich is to save money. In my mind, I would slap them in the face. In my mind, I would tell them they're a fucking dumbass. But I'm not going to do that. Because if I do, they're going to like be so emotional and mad with me. It won't even matter what I say from that point. It's a completely side tangent, but I can go on about it in another video. We want to hold off on our first instinct, which is usually our judgment. <clears throat> and it's imperative we do this because we don't want to give off to the other party signs that we are foes. You ever heard of that? Friend or foe? When we're someone is our friend, we're more likely to share more of our experiences with them. We want to come across as that. Because as soon as we come across as a foe, you can pretty much forget about that relationship. You can pretty much forget about that argument, about that conversation. So we don't want to come across as foe. We want to come across as friend. I've got some notes here from the chapter that I wanted to write down to make sure that you understand it. So first, we're going to control our first instinct because it will always be somewhat negative. And then second, we want to control our temper. Best way to do this is through just taking a deep breath because you're gonna dis they're going to dis disagree with you and you're not going to like what they say. We need to make sure that your mind doesn't get fucking... Yeah, no, we don't want you tunnel visioned, okay? I hate those arguments, bro, where you're so tunnel visioned and you're so certain that you're so right. You are so certain you would die for it. That's such a nice quote. I'm going to get sidetracked a little bit. What do you think about this quote? It's better to let someone else be wrong than to die because you were dead right. Huh. It had to do with driving, basically. I don't want to explain so much about it because then we'll get sidetracked. And I don't have time for that, bro. I got to get to church. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So when you're arguing with this guy, not arguing, what you're actually going to do. Sorry, I didn't give you like any like actual steps to do. When you disagree with someone, what I want you to do 
it's to ask you it's to ask that person why do you think that way about it why do you think this way about this certain su uh, subject we don't want to get like so like you're wrong no 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 no. we're gonna do like we did before in the other social skills class we're gonna focus the intention on them we're gonna frame the conversation on them we're going to make them feel more important okay this is very important that you must learn this everyone wants to feel important we give that other person a helping tool in making them feel important they will bless us with the greatest gift of all what is the greatest gift of all i don't fucking know gratitude yeah <laughs> sorry i just got sidetracked but we want to make we want to frame the conversation on them so we will continuously ask them questions about their own beliefs because we already have in our mind that what they're saying we don't agree with but we can learn from them okay we can learn topics and ideas from what they're from what they have might have to say so they could have this absurd belief that chips are healthy okay okay before you get into like a big old rile what you're gonna do is calm yourself down your first instinct would be you're wrong no no no, 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 no. we're gonna calm yourself down okay you're gonna calm down i realize and understand yourself okay this guy is speaking like a fucking idiot Sir, why do you think that chips are healthy for you? That simple. That simple. Whatever he says, whatever he says, uh, something like, well, they might, they're just really good for you and they, you might be able to get across them and you're able to access them easier than most other foods. They're much more cheaper. This is where you look for areas of agreement, areas where you can agree with the other person that's speaking because then it will make them, it will make you guys feel more like friends. That's exactly what we want. We want the other person to look at us as if we're their friend, as if we're like kind of like this right, right here, one to one, me and you. And as soon as we like look for areas of agreement and we start like agreeing just a little bit with them, just a little bit here, like tips are much more easier to access. You know what I'd say? I'd say, yeah, you're not that wrong, bro. Every time I walk into a gas station, there's like a full palais of chips just waiting for me. You ever experienced that, bro? He'd be like, yeah, yeah, man, I've had that happen before. He has a smile on his face. He's feeling good. He has no idea that I think that he's a fucking idiot. But <laughs> if I told him that, he'd be so much warm. So we want, we don't want to go that path, okay? We want to frame the conversation on their behalf, even if we don't even agree with them. Just to understand, some, just get some intelligence from him. The way that uh, this book would frame it right here, there's a, a chapter in the book where pretty much the author, The Magic of Thinking Big, okay? So if the book is about the magic of thinking big, of thinking big just think about um, someone that has small thinking, someone that has negative thinking. So you want to you wanna know what this author would do? This person that had negative thinking, he would use them as a guinea pig which I know sounds like a such a shit thing, but like, hang on, hang on, hang on. He would speak to them and he would know that this guy's beliefs are like objectively wrong and are pretty much negative. But he would speak to him to understand and to try to empathize just a little bit with having a shit negative belief system. So this author right here, David Schwartz, he was really, really good at observing people's beliefs and the, the and pretty much the way that they think. So that's really good. But what we want to do for when you're getting when you're about to get into an argument, firstly completely stop it. Completely cease everything that could end into an argument. And you know what that means. You're gonna have to have humility. Humility is the skill of disagreeing with your ego. Humility is the skill of allowing to say to yourself, I'm wrong and I need better guidance. Basically, humility is being a student. And I know it's going to sound absolutely crazy what I'm about to say. <sighs> Think of yourself as a student to what that guy is saying that might sound objectively wrong. Because you can always learn from something, okay? You can almost always learn from someone as long as you have the right mindset. Think of yourself as that student and you will learn even if it's like objectively wrong. So if the guy that thinks that chips are good for you, 
Let's frame it in his beliefs. Let's become a student of the guy that thinks that chips are good for you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's speaking, he's speaking, he's telling me that chips are just easier to access, the chips are cheaper. Well, what can we learn from this? Well, one, he doesn't have that much high standards for himself. Chips are easier to access. Mm -hmm. That is that. Yeah, that is true. That is true. Your willpower is shit. See, those are things that we can learn just from that guy, just from being a student. This this mindset is so amazing. But like, the concept that I want to teach you here is that when it comes to disagreements between you and this other guy, getting emotional and in his face is never going to work. Getting emotional in his face will never work because then he'll just push you farther apart. He'll think of you as a foe. So we don't want to like emotionally polarize someone when it comes to disagreements. <sighs> we want to make them feel good. It all comes back to making the other person feel good about you. How are we going to do this? Through simple framing, simple framing. They're going to speak about their beliefs, about what they think about something. We're going to tell them, that's interesting you think about that. Just a while back, I had this, I had this belief that chips might have been bad for me because they had so much high fructose corn syrup in them or that my body just doesn't like them as much or that I feel like shit after I've eaten them. Framing, simple framing. When you're having a civil disagreement, thank your opponents. Thank the person that you're disagreeing with and be like, I'm grateful that you showed, or I'm grateful for you telling me all those thoughts or feelings or whatever, all those beliefs or whatever. It, it, has, it can be in a simple way. Just tell yourself, just tell them, huh, I'm grateful for the way that you think. I'm grateful for you telling me that. Thank you for telling me that. You can just simply say that. Thank you for telling me that. I appreciate the way you think. Oh, that's such a huge one. It all comes back down to making the other person feel good. So it's, it's so huge when you allow the other person to feel good about themselves. Because then they will remember you for that and they will love you for it. I'm, I'm always going to mention that at the end of all these videos. So for you, next time you disagree with someone, don't get emotional. Don't get so feisty, icy, icy. Just ask yourself, huh? Why do you think that way, sir? You don't need to push them to this. You don't need to persuade them to your side yet. That's going to come much later. But you just need to respond to them. Respond, not react. When you react, you speak in a negative way. When you respond, you speak in a positive way. And they think of you as a friend. Ask them, okay, why do you think that way, bro? And they will tell you why they think so, why they think so, why they think so, why they think so. Why chips are better, whatever. They'll tell you. You're going to go, that's interesting. I haven't heard someone say that or speak like that before. Interesting. Um, and then, fuck, the way that I would do it, I'd pretty much like, you have to be listening. I'd be listening for things I can agree, things that I could say like, oh yeah, that is true. That is true. That is true. Come on, come on, listen, 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 listen. Because the more that you listen, the more that you focus in the conversation, the more things you'll have to say. Notice how I said conversation, not argument. You don't want to argue with them, bro. <laughs> I'm about to end this video because I ha I I'm running out of time. Jesus, fuck. Jesus. Church starts at like 10.30. It's 10.10 right now. <laughs> Final story. When I was 14 years old, I was a fucking internet goblin. I would look up videos of two people that were pretty much debating against each other. So let's say Mike Tyson and Tiger Woods. I would look onto them. I would search them up. I click on them, the video would be like, Mike Tyson is better than Tiger Woods when it comes to skill because X, Y, Z. Scroll through the comments. I'd see someone say, actually, Tiger Woods is better than Mike Tyson because of Z, Y, and X. And I'd say, you are my enemy. I click the replies. I would click the reply button and I'd say, you are wrong. Mike Tyson is, has more skill than Tiger Woods because X, 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 Y, Z. I'd give them all these facts and figures and reasons. And then they would reply back to me and they would say, you are a dumbass. Tiger Woods is better than Mike Tyson, no matter what you say. And I'd hear that and I'd get so flustered. 
And so I'd go into Word, I'd write on a full page response, a full essay, <laughs> control A, control C, go back into the replies, control V, and just spam it right there. So now you have this reply from a 14 year old with all these fucking paragraphs. Bro, this guy replies and he's like, I ain't reading all that. Tiger Woods still better. Tiger Woods on top. Nothing happened. Nothing changed. Absolutely nothing happened at all. I went into the argument the exact same way I came out. More firm and he did too. More firm and more dedicated that Tiger Woods is better than Mike Tyson. My last internet debate was in December of 2022. And I've heard of the principles in this book and I wanted to give them a try. So what did I do? I, I did it. I, I'm so grateful I was able to do this, bro. I went into the replies. Mike Tyson better than Tiger Woods. Yeah, okay. But this time when I saw Tiger Woods is actually better than Mike Tyson, I said, oh, well, why do you think that, bro? I use all the principles that we're going to speak about here. I said, why do you think that? Because I think that Mike Tyson, yeah, I did that wrong. I know. I started speaking about myself. I said, I think that Mike Tyson, blah, blah, blah. and he's like, well, because Tiger Woods is all these different, like, plath, all these skills, these trophies, these more hours in. And I was like, okay, that is fair. He has to have all those hours in. But, like, I, it, when it comes to, um, to, like, the competitive sport, fuck, what did I even say? I, I, I don't even remember what I said. Oh, yeah, I just said, okay, I agree with that. I actually am kind of thankful that he said that because it allows me to see that Tiger Woods does have some edge over edges over Mike Tyson. I gave them validation. I let them know that their points were correct somewhat. I let them feel good. Guess what the reply back I got? Guess what the reply was that I got back? Oh, yeah. Let me tell you more about my uh, original reply. I said, thank you for telling me that. I was able to see more of that. Tiger Woods does have more edges over Mike Tyson. I believe that when it comes to skill, these guys are more like 49-51 or 51-49. I think that these guys are much more closer than you think, bro. But thank you so much for your argument. I appreciate it. Oh my God, that's perfect. That is perfect. Younger AJ, you, that's amazing. Because his reply was like, it was so sweet. Oh, I wish I could find it. Damn it, he deleted all my comments. There's a YouTube option that allows you to delete all your replies. You you might need that motherfucker. But there's a fuck. His reply was so wholesome. I was like, you know what? Actually, I'll take that into effect next time. I'll take that into account. Yeah, Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson might actually have some edges over Tiger Woods. Ah. Oh. And then he's like, yeah. Thank you for your agreement, bro. I appreciate that. See you later. I left that argument feeling so great. I'd gotten this guy to think that Tiger Woods above Mike Tyson too. They're pretty much like almost at the same level. They're very strong. I convinced him just by framing the conversation in his behalf. By framing it all in his mind, basically. By validating him too. It's so powerful. <sighs> so, if there's anything that you want to take away from this video, you, dumbass, need to understand that all arguments end in the way that they started, with both sides both determining that they are better than the other. Understand that. I'm going to go eat some food and go.